Welcome back to this edition of NBC News. I'm Will Clipson. And I'm Lacey Dahl. And I really need a manicure. So do you, Will. What? You think? These nails look perfect to me. No, they need a lot of work done. I actually know the perfect person who can do your nails. Like who? Lillian Ehlers. The basketball player? Yeah, she does a lot in her free time. Like what? Well, Peter Marietta has a story. When students enter high school as freshmen at MHS, they are told they can pursue just about anything their heart desires. When they reach their senior year, they often reflect and wonder if they crammed all they could into four years. Lillian Ehlers is a senior who can confidently look back and say, tried that, did that. When I look back at my high school experience and I think about all of the things that I've done, I don't really think about the fact that I've gotten the full experience. I think I just have explored all of the things I'm passionate about and that just happens to be a lot of different things. I've played basketball all four years and then softball and cross country for two years and I think that's given me a lot of unique experiences but also I like to push myself in the classroom and I'm really like glad I've gotten the opportunity to explore that other side of myself. Ehlers is a multi-sport athlete, entrepreneur, honor student and talented pianist who likes to entertain her basketball teammates and she even made her on-stage debut this winter at the talent show. So I've played the piano since I was about five years old and I think that's something about me that not many people knew so I think my senior year I wanted to branch out and like kind of not really make it known that I played the piano but it was kind of fun to just share that fact about me something that I've been passionate about for so many years and then I finally like had the opportunity to share that with my friends and my teammates. When she was a sophomore, Ehlers launched her own small business doing nails for friends and teammates. What started out as a profitable hobby turned into a way for her to build even closer relationships with her friends. Painting my teammates nails, especially like getting us ready for state, that was sort of just a fun experience that kind of like bonded us together as we embarked on that journey. So that was really cool to do and it gives me an opportunity to like talk to them outside of just the basketball or softball setting and connect with them outside of just talking about sports all the time. I think it just builds a stronger relationship like with her specifically, like being able to like talk to her about different things, not just like basketball. I think that's what like makes it such a like fun experience. Like usually like when I get my nails done, it's like not so much of like a connection, I think. Um, you know, just like telling them like how I want my nails, but like when I'm like with Lillian, I think she just, I don't know. She's just able to like talk about things because like we're friends like outside of basketball and outside of school. So I think also just having her like as a person to like talk to, I think it's like, it's a better experience. As Lillian looks back on high school, she feels through her experiences, she's been able to build many meaningful and lasting relationships. I think participating in a lot of different activities prepares me for my life outside of high school because I've had the opportunity to explore everything that I'm passionate about and it's given me the opportunity to become more well-rounded and just meet a lot of different people and I've learned the importance of like building relationships with other people and I think through meeting different people in different settings I've been exposed to a variety of different people. In just a few short weeks, Lillian will graduate from MHS with a resume of fond memories from playing on championship teams to painting her teammates' nails. She is a great example of getting the most out of high school. As she turns her next chapter to attending college where she would like to study medical sciences or biochemistry, Lillian is confident that these experiences from high school will prepare her for whatever the future holds. I'm Peter Marietta, NBC News. See, Lillian can really do it all. She could probably make some good food too. Yeah, I'm sure she does. Speaking of that, I heard at the Taste of Mason there's some really good food there. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to do there. Yeah, I went and I even got a miniature version of me drawn. Will, that looks exactly like you. I know, it really does. But at the Taste of Mason, there was also a lot of performers there as well. Yes, so Ava Hurtaletti sat down on some of them. When you're here at the Taste of Mason, you wouldn't be wrong to assume there's going to be an array of food you can try. However, while you may be getting a sample of an ethnic dish, you're also getting a taste of different cultures from around the world, presented by local entertainers from endless different backgrounds. For some MHS students, this isn't just any old performance, but an opportunity to express a part of themselves they may not get to showcase on a daily basis. So the Taste of Mason is a sh like is a event where people share their different cultures and their different dances and they have a chance to express themselves. We don't get this opportunity every day so um, obviously sharing it with your community and the people that love you and support you is a great opportunity. I feel so honored to be here and I just love getting to express my culture because it just it helps people understand my point of view of life and um, shares my background. I would definitely 
I say it's empowering because whenever I come to school on like a daily basis, I don't get to um, showcase the Indian part of me a lot, the cultural side of me. So doing events like this, I get to show my classmates and the people within my community that there is a part of me that's, you know, not just what I do in school, but that's like the cultural side of me that I don't get to express on a daily basis. And I've been learning Carnatic music, the Indian traditional music, since I was like three years old. So just coming here and being able to sing that in front of the entire community was just amazing. It feels really amazing to be able to express my culture here in a place where at school normally we're all focused on kind of blending in and being like each other, but then I guess here we're encouraged to stand out and showcase the different parts of ourselves that we may not be able to on a daily basis. Expressing their own backgrounds individually is only one part of this event. Pulling all of these cultural displays together creates a truly moving and educational experience, not just for the audience, but for the performers as well. It's truly unbelievable because it's like you're traveling around the world and I think that's a really cute thing that the little kids are doing, actually taking their little passports around the world because it really is, you're seeing all these cultures in a place where you normally wouldn't. I guess I participate because it's a chance to spend time with the people I love and it's a time to do something I love, so yeah. I love uh, seeing others perform because it really, it gives me a whole new point of view because um, I love to see new people and their like different backgrounds and how they share their cultures. So I really love it. I think it's really important because everybody should have some type of important part in their uh, community and they shouldn't be just in the background. They should have, they should stand out and be unique and be whoever, who else they are and they should just shine bright and love themselves and appreciate what they have. It's not every night you get to explore the globe, but thanks to these talented musicians, singers, dancers, and more, we were lucky enough to have the opportunity present itself right here in Mason High School's Large Commons. On that note, while the event itself may be over for the year, these students are sure to continue expressing themselves and their cultures all year long. I'm Ava Hurtalendi, NBC News. It's really cool to see all the cultures that were at the Taste of Mason. Yeah, and the clothes that they were wearing were so cool. Speaking of clothes, did you get some new clothes, Will? Actually, I did. And I got a lot of my inspiration from the pop-up store here at Mason. I spent all of my money thrifting here. Yeah, they have some really cool stuff. Me and Sacker went to go talk with the advisor and the president of the fashion club. Last Thursday, you may have noticed a new pop-up in the large commons. The MHS Fashion Club hosted this original form of thrifting during all lunches. Sylvia Cattini shares her involvement with students helping to execute this fresh idea with hopes they gain real world experience. With the fashion club uh, and the excellent members and leadership, we are planning to have at least two pop-up thrift store throughout the year, uh, once per semester, but hopefully even more and it all depends on uh, the donations and uh, the effort that we all put on it. Be consumerist all the time. We can use gently, uh, use our new garments that were bought by mistake or wrong size and do something good for ourselves, our planet and even for our um, pocket. <laughs> so it's really a live, real life experience, uh, 360 degrees. So it's going way beyond the classroom or way beyond a school club. It's something exciting that is coming in the school and made by students, for students. The president of the fashion club, Ethiopia Jejol, brought forth this innovative form of thrift shopping to reach a new consumer market through MHS students. I saw this thing on TikTok and a different school did a pop-up thrift shop and I was like, this looks so cool, like we should do it too because I know that a lot of people aren't like able to go thrifting and you know, look good, feel good. It took a lot of preparing and it was only uh, me and Becca Sanders at first, so because of that, like, we were like re really rushed um, because we took like one day to prepare for it, which wasn't a good idea, but some strengths. Um, a lot of people came in and offered to volunteer to like clean the clothes and like set up, put it on like racks and stuff. We try to promote sustainability because the clothes that like goes to like Goodwill and stuff like ends up in landfills if no one buys them. It definitely brought a lot more members to our club. Like I think we had like 10 people show up to our first meeting and then after that we got like almost 30. So I think it like brought a lot of more people in because they thought it was like really cool and wanted to join. It's not every day students get the opportunity to go shopping during school hours. However, the fashion club hopes to make this a reoccurring event during the academic year.
The MHS Fashion Club anticipates that students will buy into this new form of thrift shopping as environmentally conscious shopping takes off. I'm Nia Sacker, NBC News. Wow, there's a lot of cool clothes there. And when I went thrifting, I saw a bunch of old Disney Channel t-shirts. Was there any Phineas and Ferb stuff? There actually was Phineas and Ferb stuff. Oh, I love Phineas and Ferb. I actually watched it last night. Ella Rupsum hit the halls to ask, what childhood TV show you guys still watch? I'll be honest, last night I sat down and watched Moana, and it got me wondering, what kinds of kids' movies do you guys watch? Which kids' movie or show do you shamelessly watch? Tangled. Is that your favorite princess? Yes, she's like beautiful. What kids' movie or show do you shamelessly watch? Scooby-Doo. Oh. Hannah Montana. Yeah, don't we all? Which kids' movie or show do you shamelessly watch? Watch? Yeah. Pokemon. Pokemon? Great, great series. The Journey. Just finished. Just finished. Watched like 12 episodes yesterday. You already know. so embarrassing. <laughs> Pikachu and Ash are going off the series and end of March, and the, my childhood hero's gone, so it's, a, it's an L. What kids shows or movies do you guys watch? Doraemon. Doraemon, Shin Chan, Chota Beam, oh my, oh my god. god. Um, Phineas and Ferb, Jesse, Jesse Dora. Dora's a good one. Dora's really good too. Bubble Guppies? <laughs> Bubble Guppies! I like to watch it on YouTube, like, what's oh good? Ben 10. Ben 10? Yeah. I've never seen that. Shameless. Spongebob, I love Spongebob. Oh, you? I don't know, like, Avatar. Like the last airbender? Or it's, yeah. or it's Earth, wind, fire, water. It'd definitely be like Earth. What's that What's that one called? Like the little elf one? The little elf? Uh, no, like it's called... Smurfs? <laughs> no, 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 no. Like the, like the elf one. Like the big, like, six-foot elf dude. Like elf. Elf, yeah, yeah. Um, I've seen Shark Boy and Lava Girl way too many times. I didn't realize how bad the CGI on that movie was until I rewatched it. I, I know, it's horrible. It's so bad. Shamelessly watch, you say? Yeah. Why, why, whoopsie? What? Why, why, whoopsie? I've never heard of that. Well, you must have lived under a rock. Sucks Probably. to be you. What kinds of kid shows or movies do you shamelessly watch? I actually don't even watch TV. It's a waste of my time. All right. Family Guy. <laughs> I don't think that's for kids. Uh, Cat and Dog. Uh, Smart. Bob, uh, um, Doc McStuffins. Doc McStuffins is so good. What's your favorite Doc McStuffins character? Uh, Doc. The Doc. <laughs> Barbie and the Dream. <laughs> wait, wait. The new one or the old one? The old one. Good. Spy Kids. Spy Kids. I love Spy Kids. Which one? Which one? First one. First okay, yeah. The okay. Fingers. The fingers. The thumbs. Yeah. I like Rio. The one with the bird. <gasps> that music yeah. is so good. You know the movie Home of a lot of aliens. I that movie that. makes me cry all the time. Same, that's the only movie that made me cry. I've watched it about 20 times. Kids movies? Like Dora. <laughs> I love Liv and Maddie. Liv and Maddie's good. Dora's really good. Yeah. Like on the regular? Yeah. Okay. You gotta like find it on like the, like the hidden websites. Like on the hidden websites? They don't have it on, like anywhere, you know? Sometimes bubble guppies. Okay, good. When it's like on in the mornings. They when do you have time to watch bubble guppies? Like I'm eating breakfast. Which kids movie or show do you shamelessly watch? I call Carly, I am a I Gibby stan. Gibby! I have Gibby things all over. My friends know Gibby, 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 Gibby. Like, you can ask anybody. Not kidding, my profile picture on everything. Gibby, 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 Gibby. Oh, Backyardigans? Yes. Um, I haven't seen that, like, ever. Um, it's actually on YouTube Prime. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Oh. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, Lion King. Oh, good, good. What kid show or movie do you shamelessly watch? Liv and Maddie. That's such a good one. Looks like I know what I'm watching when I get home. Thanks for the recommendations. I'm Ella Rubesum, NBC News. What's up, Comic Country? Spring sports are on the horizon, and Mason is prepared to dominate yet another athletic season. Looking to build on their fantastic results from last year, the baseball team here at MHS is gearing up for what should be another exciting run. Abby Samuel sat down with the team to see how they are preparing for this upcoming season. Last year, the Mason baseball team made it to the Final Four, and once again, the comments of their site set on a championship run. Much of their success can be attributed to outstanding leadership. Head coach Kurt Bly believes that the leaders of the 2023 team learned a great deal from last year's season and are ready to continue the legacy. Last year's senior group was obviously very special, accomplished a lot. Um, but you know, we're, we're excited to build on uh, what we accomplished last year, just like we, we try to do every year. And I'm excited about the group of guys we have, and I think they're motivated, and I think we're ready to get it rolling. Well, I mean, most of those guys were a part of that group. So, you know, they're, they're aware of, of the strength that we had in the leadership. Um, and we've already had guys starting to, to move in that direction. 
direction. So I'm, I'm confident that the leaders will, will step up and, and we'll be in good shape there. One of the players Bly is counting on is senior pitcher Michael Murphy. Bly believes Murphy is ready to step into a leadership role, but he's also excited about another group of players who are ready to step into more prominent positions. Well, obviously, Michael is, is one of the best there is. Uh, we know he's going to be great for us. Um, and and he's, he's learned under some really special guys, uh, and that's kind of how, that, how we want that to progress. And now he's going to step into that role. But we have some arms that you know, we're pretty excited about that just haven't had an opportunity yet because of the guys that were ahead of him. Uh, so we're looking forward to seeing those guys um, you know, step up and, and, and do well for us and be the next group. Murphy, a University of Michigan commit, learned the value of great leadership from now graduated Brendan Garula and Noah Samuel, who both play collegiately. Murphy hopes he can continue the tradition of strong senior leadership. So last year we had great leadership through Brendan and Noah, and those are hard places to fill. They were great leaders, so we're just trying to do whatever we can to be the best leader we can be. Senior middle infielder Drew Cox is excited to step into the role as a leader after learning so much from the seniors who mentored him when he was an underclassman. Last year with the senior class being very big, we didn't, like there wasn't as many um, younger leaders because Brendan and Stewie led those roles. Uh, and none of us underclassmen has really like been put in that position. So definitely like leading the younger guys who haven't been on the varsity level and like just helping them any way I can, whether that's on the field or off the field, just to build those relationships. Leadership, culture, and solid play on the field will play a major role and what the Comets will accomplish in 2023. Both Murphy and Cox believe the team has learned valuable lessons and now they're ready to take the next step. We had a great season last year, made it really far. We wanted to go farther. So this year it's just using what we had last year. And as we say, we're trying to move the needle, try to get to the next step, which is the state championship. We gotta take it one step at a time and that move the needle concept makes us focus on each game at a time, but also we wanna reach that ultimate goal of winning the state title. Once again, the Comets have a talented roster full of gifted players, but talent alone isn't enough. Bly and his senior leaders are focused on creating a culture of shared responsibility and continued growth. Behind an outstanding pitching staff, solid defense, and timely hitting, the Comets could wind up taking the next step in their quest to the state championship game. I'm Abby Samuel, NBC Sports. For many, the spring season means it's go time for your sport. Unless your season is already wrapped up, and then you may find yourself at loose ends. Many athletes whose season is in the fall and winter have started looking at other places to hone in on their skills during the school off season. Three eager MHS students in particular are gearing up for a spring soccer season with FC Cincinnati's youth development team. Sarah Kim takes a closer look at their ambitious goals for the future. Three Mason High School student athletes hope to one day play professional soccer. Alan Cappage, Paul Chen, and Matthias Paez already have a head start as players on the FC Cincinnati youth development team. Cappage, a senior, and Chen, a junior, are taking full advantage of the opportunity to learn from professional coaches and trainers in an opportunity geared toward helping them achieve their ambitious goals. I've been playing soccer since probably I was six years old. My greatest accomplishment would either be um, getting a full ride to Akron, which is a uh, top 25 D1 college, or being invited and playing to like four or five national teams. Some aspirations would be getting my pro debut, going pro, um, doing well at college next year and uh, just probably trying to play in Europe. I've learned how to grow as a player. I've matured a lot. You know, this is an environment where, you know, you got to really work together with your teammates. You know, you got to like create chemistry, create a good bond. You know, you have to get along well with everyone. And, you know, just like physically demanding, like I've really like just grown as a player all through the years. This is more like um, a professional environment, or as like the other things are like more like the like amateur kind of, I guess. Um, I've been playing soccer since I was four years old, so I've been playing for 12 years. Uh, I want to commit to a D1 college pretty soon, and then after that, I don't know, but I want to go pro too. All these people want to play pro, and some of them I play with the national team, so it's a pretty good environment to be in. The environment's always changing position goal is changing so you always got to know you, you got to be able to fit into any environment. The people around me, the coaches are professional and getting to be able to go on trips with the team is really fun. 
Matias Paez moved from Venezuela to play for the FC developmental teams. As a high school sophomore, he is determined to play professionally. He knows it will take a lot of hard work, but he also has someone very close to him who also had the same hopes and dreams. His father played professionally and Paez believes he can follow in his footsteps. I think the hardest part is when, when you do what you love, even when you don't want, when you're not motivated enough to do it. And I think those are the moments where you have to put the, more, the most effort and that's the, teams, that's the time where you improve the, the, that you improve the most. I mean, uh, after I'm out of school, every hour that I can put on working on soccer, I'll put it. My biggest inspiration has been always the same, my dad, he played 17 years professional and I think having a best mentor than him, I couldn't ask for. And my older, my older brother, that he's professional too, and some stars of soccer, I think. My dad started his career when he was 18 years old in Venezuela, in the team of our city called Estudiantes de Merida. I think what, what my dad inspired us to do is that showing your talent, having confidence, having confidence on yourself, uh, working hard, having personality, uh, never and never giving up no matter what the situation is and all of that that's that's what have empire have inspired my brothers and me to play soccer and i think that's the best that he could he could have gave us and he's still teaching us that i hope to do to accomplish what he accomplished and i mean i, I wish i can i hope i can do more and i always make him happy because he's been with me since since i started playing and he's been i mean teaching me and, and giving me advices that really works for the sport. I will, play, I will continue playing soccer after high school and this is what I love. I mean, I will never leave it till the day I, I don't feel to play anymore, you know. Soccer is considered the most popular sport in the world. That growth in popularity has been experienced in Cincinnati with the success of Major League Soccer's FC Cincinnati. Now, as they take on FC's developmental team, Paul, Alan, and Matthias are one step closer to achieving their personal goal of reaching the professional level. I'm Sarah Kim, NBC Sports. While some athletes may use their school off-season as practice, others choose to pursue another sport. This allows students to diversify their talents and build an impressive portfolio across multiple sports. This is already paying off for one freshman here at MHS and she has the accolades to show for it. Will Buckley met with Bella Tebley to see how she is already achieving success in her first year here at the high school. School as large as Mason, it can be pretty eventful when a freshman cracks the lineup on one of the school's varsity athletic teams. It happens, but not that often. This year, Bella Tepley is one of those noteworthy freshmen who's made her mark in just her first few months here at MHS. In the fall, Tepley was an all-conference cross-country runner and was Mason's third finisher at the state meet in helping the Comets win the state cross-country championships. For us to like win was just like amazing because it like proved that like our hard work as a team like you know got us there. It was just so special to celebrate it with my teammates. We were really close that this year and the senior leaders like they really helped us get to that point. In the winter, she hit the pool where she earned the GMC Swimmer of the Year and qualified for the state swimming championships in four separate events. I thought it would be like more rusty going into swimming since I was running a lot more than I was swimming at the time, but I feel like I picked it up a little bit um, faster than I thought I would. Winning multiple championships and awards in her first year as a Comet has instilled a new level of confidence in Tepley. I think they've just helped like prove that like my hard work is worth it because most days or like some days from running I go from running to swimming or swimming to running and doubling up is not easy so when it like the results come like it, help, it makes it a little easier. When Tepley first dove in the pool, head varsity swimming coach Mark Sullivan knew that he had a talented swimmer on his hands. But as the season progressed, Tepley continued to prove herself and stood out as one of the most promising swimmers on the roster. Well, I knew she was a good age group swimmer. I, I really didn't realize how fast of a swimmer she was going to be her freshman year. So at this point, my expectations were kind of like average for her. And uh, obviously, when she arrived here for the swimming season, she's exceeded my expectations. Our first meet of the year in December when we went up to the uh, Akron Firestone dual meet, 
and then the next day we competed in an invite at Camp McKinley. So, um, I mean, her performance is up there, pretty much set the stage for her. We knew we had a really good swimmer and obviously a really good distance swimmer as well. With her and, and the addition of a few other swimmers has really elevated our team this year. So they lead through a great example. Bella's kind of a quiet leader. I mean, her performance is always done in the water. So her leadership has been really solid for us and she's obviously been a top performer. With her, and this is un unique with a, um, a lot of athletes here at Basin, is she's a, a three sports star. I mean, she's cross country, then swimming, and then I believe she's gonna be doing track. She obviously came out of a disciplined cross country sport, but uh, swimming is just as demanding. And uh, I'm just proud of all the kids for the work that they put in and what she's been able to do for the program. I mean, she fits in great to our culture and uh, I'm excited to have her. Whether it's in the pool or on the track, Tepley has made a huge splash in the world of Mason athletics. Through her leadership and performance, it's safe to say that the Mason girls swimming, cross country, and track team has found their next star. I'm Will Buckaloo, NBC Sports. That'll wrap up sports. I'll send it back to Lacey and Will at the anchor desk. That wraps it up for this edition of NBC News. And we'll see you guys in the next one.